Jay Ajayi was a borderline first round pick for fantasy just a year ago. And then, to quote the great scholar, we were all kicked in the little Ajays. I'm thinking at this point I should probably just sing all of the mixtapes that we do on the podcast on these shows, don't you think? Uh, yeah, so Ajayi was fairly touchdown challenged early in the year with the Dolphins. Got a lot of excitement out of being traded to the Eagles. And then for a month, basically had... No workload at all. Came on a little bit in the playoffs, but I want to look at his film and discover what he is. And I have to say, what we're going to discover is there should be nothing about Jay Ajayi that should be touchdown challenged. Let's take a look at this true power back. Let's start out with this run from Miami's first game last year. And this is sort of what I wish Ajayi always was on film. He runs to the right here. Stumbles a little bit, approaching the line. Casey Hayward breaks down to make the tackle. And then listen, it's not Le'Veon Bell. It's a pretty nice spin move for a big man. Ajay is 223 pounds. And what I thought I saw from him on film at the end of his rookie year into the second year was pretty sweet feet. And honestly, this isn't what we see all the time, right? There's a lot to like. I don't feel like this run is all that typical. And I'll show you a different spin move later that I think maybe is a little bit more typical of Ajayi. Uh, in, in fact, in just a second, I'll tell you exactly who Ajayi currently reminds me of. Hey, a quick break to thank DraftKings for sponsoring us today. It's not too late. If you still have a fantasy draft ahead of you, you can still get my Harris Football Player Profile Almanac for 2018. And DraftKings will get it to you free if you make a first-time deposit into a new account of $10, and the Almanac costs $17 retail, so it's a pretty good deal. All you have to do is click the link below me in the show notes. That'll take you over to DraftKings, to a special URL just for us. There you can make your first time deposit of $10, and within 24 hours, you can expect the PDF, the Almanac, to be sent to you. It's 200 plus pages, there are film grades, and there are stats, and there are lots of analyses, and maybe some jokes in there as well. I think you'll like it, and if you have a draft ahead, what are you waiting for? Thanks, DraftKings, for sponsoring. Let's talk a little bit more about Jay Ajayi. That first Ajayi run I showed you a couple moments ago reminds me of this Carlos Hyde run from 2015. Week one, Cousin Josh on my podcast had said Hyde would be out of the NFL, and then Hyde did this. Again, similar-sized player, spin move, would maybe expect him to lay the hammer. My parallel for Ajayi is Hyde which makes him good, a good player. Let's show you some more good. What you're mostly getting with Ajayi, and with Hyde for that matter, is power. This is a four yard gain, and I don't have any fancy filmic things to tell you about it. He's just really strong with a powerful base, and he winds up with David Bass on his shoulders and carries him in extra yards. You know, Jay Ajayi is a hammer. On this one, he'll run right, He'll basically run into Cam Jordan, who gets his mitts on him. But Ajayi has the power not only to just get away, but also not really get his stride broken. I'm looking for that a lot of the time. Now, I showed you Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt might take this contact as well and might not get tackled, but it would probably send him hurtling in a different direction, whereas Ajayi keeps going forward with oomph. Makes an okay little move there at the second level to the inside. Takes another hit gets 15. I mean, how much contact is there on this play? The initial way through the line, he's bumped. He keeps his balance. Number 37 there, Ricardo Allen, a safety who's a lot smaller than Ajay. Oh, 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 heavens, my goodness. Stop it. Stop it. He's dead already. There's one of these plays a week from Ajay. Let's get him over to the Eagles. And yup, as I'll discuss, that was pretty disappointing. The fact that he couldn't get into a full work workload basically into the playoffs, that's annoying. But he's still doing this stuff pretty regularly, even with limited work. It's hard to rely on running over the Earl Campbell run, running over everybody as a fantasy bread and butter, because we also like guys who can create when this doesn't happen. But suffice it to say, near the goal line, <laughs> there should be no reason a guy shouldn't be a total handful. So to this point, from what I've shown you, it all looks pretty good, right? And let's be honest, I can't tell you why the Eagles didn't use him very much when we most needed it around the time of the fantasy playoffs. The fact is that they didn't, and there are some limitations in Ajayi's game, and I think maybe we'll take a look at some of those and then reconvene and talk about what the Eagles see in their potential feature back.
With Ajayi, this is probably the best we get when it comes to lateral quickness. A run designed for him to cut back to the right, and he does. He gets a block, and he's headed toward the sideline. And the key interaction is with number 25 of Tennessee. That's Adore Jackson. Jackson's a good player. There's no shame. Ajayi can't quite accelerate enough to surprise Jackson and get around him, but I think it's instructive. When you see your running back get caught like this when he's trying to run laterally, we call that the Jeremy Hill. You know, you suspect acceleration maybe isn't the biggest part of his game. And in fact, at the end of this run, what we like is I think we're back to power a little bit because Jackson does have a hold of him, and Ajayi is just a strong, strong like bull. He is strong enough to escape. This one against the Rams, especially from the end zone, you can just see, unlike guys like Kenyon Drake, Devontae Freeman, when Ajayi dances in the backfield like this, he just doesn't have the body type that'll allow him to quick twitch into a cut. He is stopped. When he does this, he's not accelerating out of it hard. Instead, it's a lot of dancing, and it results in not very much explosion. And in fact, the spin move is almost a replacement for a hard cut. If he could make a hard cut that he could accelerate hard out of, I don't think he'd need the spin move here. Dalvin Cook, when he's healthy, he doesn't need to spin like this because he can bounce. And coming out of a bounce, he can explode to the outside, and Ajay doesn't have that. Again, we'll start this play from the end zone view because you'll see on this inside handoff at a shotgun going right, Ajay has a moment where there's a pretty good clear lane. You know, I'm not saying he's supposed to break this for a 75-yard touchdown, but he neither accelerates hard up into that lane, sort of is ready for everybody to collapse on him, nor does he cut back to his left where the linebacker may be over-pursuing. Ajay might be in the clear here. He, he's not slow, but he's not a darter, not a high acceleration guy, not really a creator as much as he is a destroyer. This national TV play against the Cowboys, I mean, we will take this play. This will turn out to be a great long run. This is pretty much the seas parting for Ajay, and it's a foot race. And from the side view, you'll see that the guy who catches him, number 31, Byron Jones, he's five yards behind Ajay and catches him in about 30 yards. It's not a criticism. It's a little bit of a criticism, but it just puts us in the mindset of what Ajay is. Carlos Hyde, a better LeGarrette Blunt. He's a masher. And as a receiver, listen, Ajay's made some plays in the passing game. He had this touchdown from Nick Foles, but this characterizes what it's mostly going to be with him. He's not nifty enough with his feet to run complicated routes, to get open in traffic, etc. It's not what the Eagles are going to ask him to do. It's going to be, if and when he catches the ball, little screens and flares. And the thinking is, as a result, he's not really the dude you're making the centerpiece of your passing game to running backs. Which is why Ajay doesn't really fit the mold of a West Coast running back, which of course the Eagles have traditionally employed, and Doug Peterson wants to run a fairly pure version of a West Coast offense. And that's why Corey Clement gets a lot of conversation, because he's a little bit more of that laterally quick pass catcher, and maybe even Darren Sproles. So what do we do with Ajayi? He is not a touchdown challenged player. He should score touchdowns as long as he's healthy. But that is a question as well, because as of my recording this, there have been questions. Apparently, Jai missed about a week of training camp, and they've talked about that bone-on-bone -bone condition in his knees. We don't know exactly what has been bothering him, and the Eagles, as far as I know, still think he plays week one. There's a little bit of risk from a couple different directions, because we're seeing he's maybe not a complete player. There's a little depth chart pressure from more traditional West Coast running backs, and there are questions about injuries. And yet, you've got a big guy who can make that spin move, who can sometimes make players miss, who does have a little bit of a long speed if he gets the long runway to build up to it. I think he winds up with seven, eight, nine touchdowns this year and doesn't need the massive workload. And that's why maybe he's not characterized as one of the best running backs in the league or one of the best kinds of running backs. But I have him well inside my top 20 fantasy backs. He's number 16 for standard. He's 19 or 20 for PPR. I'm all on board. I don't think he'll be kicked in the little Ajays. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. 
write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. 